So about two years ago, everyone in our household had a cold. My husband stayed home with our infant son and I took my then four-year-old daughter to CVS in search of more medicine. Now I had hoped that relief could be dispensed through the drive-through, but after waiting in line for 20 minutes, the pharmacist informed me that I in fact had to go inside the store in order to get my off-brand Sudafed. So we parked and into the store we schlepped. And what was waiting for us right through the door other than the sparkliest, most rainbowy display of unicorn jewelry and accessories that you've ever seen. It's like they knew that my daughter was coming that day, so they put it right up front so she couldn't miss it. And her eyes glazed over and her mouth salivated and she reached for this purple glittery headband complete with a unicorn horn and ringlets of plastic hair. And she said, mommy, please. And I said, no, honey. And she said, but please. And in my congested state, I'm rubbing my temples and I'm like, honey, we're just here for some medicine. And she said, but mommy, I've been so good lately. And I said, honey, maybe we can put it on your Christmas list next year. And she said, next year? And then she lost it. And there were tears and explaining and pleadings and begging. And I couldn't get her to walk away from the plastic unicorn glory. Now, everyone who walked through that door got to witness this happening, got to witness my daughter on her hands and knees, clinging to my coat and begging and sobbing. Because from my daughter's perspective, she had been betrayed. She knew we were going to run errands. She knew I was gonna buy stuff. She saw something she wanted and she thought because she'd been so good, she could have it. And then mom said no, mom betrayed her. Now, we've all felt betrayals in the past. When we were young children, it was probably very similar to how I just described. But as we got older, the betrayals felt more serious, became more serious. Maybe a friend said or did something behind our back or someone said they would be there for us or stand up for us and then they didn't. Maybe our parents got divorced or our spouse was unfaithful. Whether upon looking back, the betrayal seems slightly comical or very painful, the one thing that every betrayal has in common is that only someone we trust, someone we sometimes love can betray us. We expect our enemies to hurt us. We expect our bullies to say things that hurt our feelings, but only people we trust can take the, our expectations and flip them upside down. Now, I know many of us have experienced intense loss this last year. And it's in times like these that sometimes it feels like God himself has betrayed us. So we're at this crossroads and where do we go? In this time of Lent, when we focus on the events leading up to Jesus' death, we are reminded of one particular betrayal. That is, of course, the one by Judas Iscariot to Jesus when he turned Jesus over to be arrested and eventually killed. And Judas is one of Jesus's best friends. Jesus even put him in charge of his finances. Judas stuck by Jesus through thick and thin. He left everyone and everything else behind in order to follow Jesus, and yet he betrays him. Now, I don't know about you, but as I walk through my life, I find more and more comfort in the fact that Jesus experienced the same pain and the same struggles that I've experienced. I find comfort in that because Jesus shows us how to respond. He shows us which way to go at the crossroads. So while sitting at the table with Judas in John 13, it says that Jesus was troubled in spirit. He knew that his friend was going to betray him. And he simply said, do quickly what you are going to do. Now, Jesus is showing us how to respond to betrayal. He knows the father's plans for him. And instead of lashing out or wallowing in sorrow, he simply responds with grace. So here's my question for you. Do you know the Father's plan for you? 
we get a hint of it in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. And it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, our trust is in a God who has chosen us, a God that will never betray us. We may look at our lives and say, but I really want the purple unicorn headband or the promotion or the perfect home. And God may have another plan for us. So when our plans fail, do we commence to throw a tantrum or do we respond as Jesus did? With grace. So how can we use our trust in God's plan as a shield against the betrayals we experience along the way? In the two years since that visit to CVS, my daughter has in fact grown in patience and understanding and is now actually able to help her younger brother when he's having a hard time. And just as she has learned and is now helping others, I hope that we can do the same. I hope that we're reminded that our Heavenly Father does want good things for us, but he doesn't guarantee our perpetual happiness. I hope that when we feel betrayed, we can respond with grace. I hope that instead of putting our hope in our plans, we instead put our hope in Jesus, who understands what we've been through and who will never let us down. So let's give glory to God. Give glory to the one who has chosen us. Let's keep our eyes fixed on his plan and let's respond with grace at every opportunity. Please, let's pray those words found in that beautiful reminder from 1 Peter. Heavenly Father, thank you for choosing us to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and your own people. Help us to use this knowledge to proclaim your mighty acts to glorify you who called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.